What is up guys? Welcome back to another video. And today we're going to do things a little bit different. Today is going to be a bit of more of an update video. I haven't fully completed all my testing with the Steam Deck and my final conclusions yet. And I really want to get something out to you guys. So I'm going to do this really quick video on our progress. And I'll go ahead and step to the side and probably post it right here, right there. Um, so I've done the overclocking already. Um, I did the, the smokeless with, uh, cryobytes tutorial side by side and everything worked great except for one thing, TDP. Poppy here. If you like this type of content, go ahead, hit that like, hit the subscribe, helps the channel out a lot. And if you all want do it for me, do it for, for her, her, look at her, do it for her. Uh, followed the directions of the TB, TDP, went to Smoke Plus, adjusted it there correctly, went to the BIOS, adjusted it there correctly, meaning you just turn it from automatic to manual in the Steam Deck BIOS. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, there will be links below to Cryobit's uh, uh, video on how to do it. This is not a tutorial. Um, did everything right correctly and then had power tools already, but for some reason, if I set my, let's say, TDP to 20 and the power tools was set at 30, it should default to 20, but for my Steam Deck, it wouldn't do that. So about uh, two hours of troubleshooting, I figured out that I just had to turn the TDP in power tools to what I set it on in the smokeless bio. So I turned it from 20 uh, on the smokeless to 20 on power tools and it worked perfectly. I don't know why. It's yeah, according to Cryobyte, that shouldn't be an issue. But if you have that problem, you might want to play around with power tools a little bit and adjust the TDP. So uh, my overclocks, a stock Steam Deck um, is 3500 uh, gigahertz or 3.5 gigahertz. Um, and I was able to push it to four stable, no issue. I pushed to 4100 and I got some real issues there. It I could even load games. so. Uh, 4,000 uh, gigahertz is uh, where my um, CPU goes when it comes to my APU. And as for my graphics card, I actually haven't pushed it completely to the limit. Um, stock uh, megahertz on the graphics card is 1,600. I was able to push it to 2,200. Pretty dang good for a second quarter Steam Deck, right? Um, and... Um, my max TDP, whew, I did it last night with new testing with a room temperature of 24 degrees. Pretty toasty up in here in the attic that night. Um, we got uh, TDP, stable TDP of 28. 28, guys, the stock TDP on a Steam Deck is 15 watts. I was nearly double. 28 uh, watts is so much power. Actually, I noticed this in, I believe, 27, or maybe 26, but that is pulling so much wattage out of your Steam Deck um, that your power cable, I mean, you know, the power adapter and brick, it doesn't give enough juice to the Steam Deck to keep up with that demand, meaning you're slowly draining your battery while charging. That's how much power I was able to push through my Steam Deck. And with that power, I saw about a 10 to 15% increase on uh, my frame rates in Miles Morales. And the only reason I chose Miles Morales to testing, out of all the games I had, it was the only one that would really push the Steam Deck and really pull all that max juice. Every other game I tested kind of would like do this weird megahertz throttle and stay in a consistent, I don't know. And that's like I said, that's why I'm doing this update video. Need to figure that stuff out before I do the full uh, download, but really good. 15% increase overall, very smooth frames. Our max temperature on that one was pretty warm. It was 88 on the GPU and 91 on the CPU. And the fan speed was pegged at 7,000 RPM. And so was the Noctua fan on the JSOX backplate also was pegged on 4,500 RPM, it's max RPM. And um, it was great. It was very cool. 80, 91 is a little high. 
but we are pushing 28 watts. We did the same test at 27 watts and we got pretty much the same result. The temperatures were a lot better, they were calmer. I think we peaked at 88, but uh, we were steady across 85 across the board for pretty much um, everything uh, in the Steam Deck. <clears throat> Temperatures were pretty good. Our hot spots on the back plate, we went ahead and took a couple laser shots on the back plate. And um, we're talking about the JSOX back plate to be exact. And our hottest spot was 36 um, degrees on that. Without a cooling fan, um, I've seen temperatures on that back plate get up to 57 degrees. So it gets pretty warm. Um, and with that, Noctua cooler and that heat sink with that Gilead thermal pad things get nice and cool we dang near room temp sometimes All right, so we did some more testing. So what I wanted to find out next was What is a reasonable amount of noise, right? So 5200 rpm on the internal fan gave us a DB of 39.5 while the Noctua fan was still running at max RPM, but that's a quiet fan, so it wasn't except bringing up the noise very much. Um, for example, when the internal fan was pegged at 7,000 RPM, we did um, have a dB of 46, so we dropped it nearly um, by 7 dB by just dropping the fan speed of the internal fan from 7,000 to around 5,300 RPM. And when we did that, we went ahead and we dropped our max TDP to 20, right? We dropped it to 20 knowing very well that things are gonna heat up, right? Um, and I don't wanna risk, risk the steam deck. So here's what we did. So 20 TDP, all the clocks were the same, 4,000 on the CPU and 2,200 on the GPU. We went ahead and had pretty much near the same results. So with that drop in TDP, we did lose uh, about three to four frames um, with that eight degree drop, sorry, that eight watt drop. And overall it was pretty good gameplay. You know, it's not bad, a lot less tearing in the graphics card. That's the one thing I did notice is, um, you get a lot of fuzzies and, um, uh, around, uh, miles while he swings. And with all these overclocks in the higher TDP, that, 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 that fuzziness around him is a lot less. So you, it's almost not there sometimes. Um, but so we pegged that fan speed at 5,300 and our temps for that were a pretty good solid temps. We got 85, 85, still pretty warm, warmer for what I like, but 20 watt TDP and a quieter running steam deck is, uh, is a win for me. And especially since it is boosting pretty well about I would say five to eight percent better than a stock Steam Deck, which is good because it just cleans up the frames. You're not really going to notice like 60 frames. It's not going to happen. It's just you're going to have lower lows, higher highs, and it's just going to look smoother altogether. And you're not going to get those fuzzies like I was seeing those artifacts. That's the word, not fuzzies, artifacts. All right. So with that testing, I was like, OK, so this is running pretty OK right now. What is it going to be like in the stock backplate? So I went ahead and threw that stock backplate on and boy, did things get hot. So we kept the same TDP of 20, right? 20 on the TDP, 4,000 on the CPU and 2,200 on the GPU. We throttled. We, we immediately throttled. We had the fan pegged at 5,300 uh, RPMs, right? It was on... A uh, fantastic plugin pegged at 5300. We ramped up instantly to 91. From 91, we climbed into 95. And I didn't know the Steam Deck does this, but the uh, set the fan to 5300, and the Steam Deck went ahead and turned the fan to over 7,000 RPM. Meaning the Steam Deck was like, bro, this is hot. What are you doing? And it ramped it up. And at that point, I was like you know what, it's not worth it. And I went ahead and shut everything down. Um, definitely. So with that said, and wow. this is kind of reason why the video is not done yet, coming up with that conclusion, um, you wanna, if you're overclocking your Steam Deck, you you better not be rocking a stock backplate. I'm serious, like if you're actually overclocking your Steam Deck, are you pushing it, you're increasing the TDP, 
you should not be rocking this or stock steam deck 20 d a 20 watt tdp is not that much right it's not that much but wow was it hot it was really really hot and i would not suggest overclocking anything above 20 watt tdp if you have a stock steam deck backplate because i i that was that was a little scary for me um, I didn't take any hot spots, didn't have any cha a chance to do it, but it, things were really toasty in the APU area. So, in closing, um, I didn't even pull any frames on that one, to be honest, too. Uh, but, but in closing, what I think I'm going to do for the next video is that we're going to try to find the perfect setting, the perfect sweet spot. And we already know kind of what's our upper limit now. Um, which is 28 watts TDP. It is 4,000 and 2,200 megahertz on the GPU. And um, we definitely know that we can keep this thing cool in a pretty warm room. So 24 degrees, our peak temps were 85 with our JSOX backplate mod and our fan mod. So those two mods combined are literally the best mods you could do for cooling your Steam Deck, especially if your plans are to overclock. So on the next video, we're going to break down um, best settings for myself uh, when it comes to like that sweet balance of, you know, noise to performance while overclocking. So definitely, I think there are a lot of headroom for overclocking, meaning that we don't probably don't need to push to 28 watts. We could probably get away sipping at, you know, that 20, 21 watts while still pushing this 4,000 and 2,200 on the GPU uh, with next to no extra noise because our DBs did drop quite a bit from 46 to 39 when we turned that fan from 7,000 RPM to 5,300 RPM. But definitely the overclocking is going well. Also gonna figure out some other games to test the overclocking. But other than that, guys, sorry, I don't have a full on video, but it's coming, it's gonna be working. We're gonna be working on this for a while. And then when we get done with all this fun stuff, when it comes to just overclocking a Steam Deck, now that we have a Steam Deck can, that can push four gigahertz, right? Wait till we plug it into an external graphics card. It's going to be a fun one and I actually want to do that right now. But I got to get this other testing done. Maybe we'll take a break. I don't know. Whatever. Guys, thank you so much. I'm sorry that the video hasn't been coming out as frequently as I usually do. Um, having some technical issues, but I, I just want to say thank you for watching and uh, if you liked it, hit that like. If you loved it, hit that subscribe. And seriously, um, guys, thank you so much. Um, if you want to catch um, any of the mods that I do, go ahead and visit us at DOIPoppy.net. You can download the STLs for some of the mods I do. Um, also offering uh, thermal pads and a little grill if you do your very own um, ventilation mod. A fan mod. I gotta, I gotta have a concise name for that. But yeah, go ahead and you can get that stuff at DIYPoppy.net. And um, guys, other than that, thank you very much for watching this video. Um, hopefully, I get the next one up soon, and we can. Oh, man, I know this is cool stuff, though, guys. It's freaking really cool stuff. I'll catch you guys on the next one.